Morning, Brad with BA Fabrication here. We are working on a snowblower today. Uh, see if we can get it running good enough to get this thing shipped on out. Uh, also, it's December, it's cold. I know the hat looks stupid, but uh, it's plenty warm. So we got that going for us. So we're taking off the uh, carburetor here because it only runs with the choke on, uh, and we think it's not getting enough fuel. So we're going to try and make that right. Now, I'm not sure this thing has ever been apart. It's only uh, been ran a handful of times. And even then, there's really no wear on the impeller or anything like that. So, uh, we think it's probably just been varnished up from sitting inside the carburetor. It's not the intention of these videos, but it's always nice to use your uh, camera to have proof of where things like these linkages in here go just in case you have to be for whatever reason away from the project you can always come back and have an idea of what's going on that way I thought this was going to pop right off right there but apparently it had other intentions. Go ahead and put that back to its desired thickness so it'll slide back on because that's a ground for a kill switch that goes over here. It's also this little spring, if you can see that in there. Uh, it goes in this little bitty tab. These things are super easy to tear up, but they've been back pretty pretty good so we ain't too awful worried about it and this tube here is for the primer bulb we're going to see if we can twist it around a little bit and get it snuck off there uh -huh. okay apparently it wants to stay on worse than I want to take it off so what we're going to do is flip the carburetor upside down and try and keep it above the level of the fuel within the fuel tank so then we don't have to worry about gas just going absolutely everywhere. Um, we do have to worry about screws going everywhere. So there's that. And yes, that primer bulb, as you saw, will leak fuel out of it. So it's just something to keep in mind there. And this little flange goes up inside the carburetor and kind of take note of stuff like that as to how it goes. You can see in there there's a bunch of corrosion and that tells us this probably hasn't been apart before. I'm going to go get a couple of wrenches and screwdrivers and we'll get back on this. Okay, we're going back after this thing. Uh, these style carburetors have here one nut, and it's usually the one that uh, has a jet built into it. But we're going to go ahead and take that off and see what she looks like. Okay, you can see in there, it's just pretty dang nasty. All of it is. Uh, it's not due to the current fuel quality. It's just due to the stuff that sat in there for a long time. So we are going to have to end up cleaning this thing out pretty good. Good news is that it looks like we were probably right. And this here 
is, is pretty gross and I don't think, can't really see, but I don't think it's flowing fuel correctly. You can see around the float how nasty that is. Let pin. I usually just store everything I can inside that little bowl cup here. Uh, it just makes everything go back together so much nicer when I know where it all is. And this has a rubber seal for the seat, so it's probably in decent shape. They don't tend to really build stuff up. So I think the float's probably operating right. We're still going to clean the float off, but uh, we'll just clean all this off, spray it out real good and make sure that our channels are clean and our jets clean and I'll bet it'll run a whole lot better. And we're back, right here with my Smurf gloves on. I uh, have special headgear for this. Um, this is a jet reamer. It's used to clean out carburetor jets and if needed, make them a little bit bigger. Uh, we do a little bit of carb tuning and that helps with that. So. These have a cross drilled piece as you can see, I've already cleaned it. And then I, I went through and made sure that that goes all the way down to the bottom and you can't see it in the video but uh, when you push this up there, if you look at the light you can see that that's cleaned out. So uh, these weren't, this wasn't terribly dirty so I'm guessing that there's some stuff down in the channel of the carburetor that has caused it to be uh, poor running but we're going to go ahead and spray everything off and then try and get down to that. We'll just try and force it out with the can of carb clean. So, white sunglasses on because we're cool like that. Try and clean the outside and everything and then make sure that we've got some solvent. Preferably if you can get it all over everything, that's, that's best. Uh, if you can just spray it all over the complete machine. That's that seems to be the the common theme here. And it's still pretty gross. A lot of times we'll use a uh, a small either wire or plastic bristle brush for this stuff, but uh, said this one isn't horribly bad. It just kind of Rub my glove. <laughs> rub my gloved finger in there, and uh, get it passably clean. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's uh, it doesn't have any chunks or anything that can actually build up and cause the thing to not run. And then the float, as long as the float's not leaking, and this one didn't have a flooding condition, it had a not running condition. So we're pretty sure that the float's good. If you want to, you can take a cup of water or something and tie a little weight to the float and put it in there and actually check and see if the float has bubbles coming out of it, and that'll give you a good idea as to if the float is leaking. You don't see it anymore, but floats used to, uh, you don't see it as much anymore. But if a float got a pinhole in it or something, it would slowly fill with fuel and cause it to become heavy. And it would shut gas off on, uh, on car carburetors, uh, like uh, quadrajets and carters and stuff like that. But on these, it actually turns the fuel on all the time because the float's located on the bottom instead of in the top. And uh, it'll, it'll pull the needle out of the seat and cause constant flooding. Fuel will just drip out and go into your, car, into your engine and wash your rings out. And it's just not a good situation overall. Uh, as you can see, this here has got a bunch of crud on it. And then these are the jets. No, they're not jets. They're just individual channels. We're going to try and make sure they are clean. And this is the important part why you should be wearing some sort of safety glass protection. And anytime you're dealing with stuff like this, that it might have the opportunity to, to sort of spit pressurized fuel directly back at you or a carb cleaner, you just you want to keep this stuff out of your eyes. 
I know it's a consumer grade product you can buy, so you know the likelihood of you actually doing any super serious damage of it happening once every now and then is pretty low. But it's it's not something we want to play with. Really, we only get one set of eyes, and we'd rather keep that set than uh, than have to deal with being visually impaired more than we already are. Okay, so the the needle is back in. If you remember, the needle was just spotlessly clean, so we, we didn't spray it off. Pin for the float. Get that lined up, put back in there. These things are pretty simple. We do a lot of carburetors. This is just this isn't a rebuild, this is just a carburetor cleaning. Um, if it was a rebuild, we would replace every gasket on it. Uh, and of course that costs more, but this is just a cleaning and You know most people that have their carburetors cleaned with all these o-rings and stuff in there. It's, it's usually sufficient um, A lot of the other older styles have paper gaskets and those have to be replaced But if you're just dealing with a bunch of o-rings, it's usually completely reusable And there's just no reason to charge anybody extra money for that kind of thing. So there you have it, there you are. It's clean and back together. It's just a basic clean, nothing fancy. We didn't uh, soak it or anything like that, anything. And as you can see, that uh, piece of hose broke off, which is super special. We're real excited about that because um, it's going to leak fuel as soon as I get it down below the fuel level. Let's see if I can get that off of there. see here in a little bit if I've got enough uh, fuel to go down onto that but that does tell me something if this broke down odds are this has had fuel that's got ethanol in it you always want to try and use good grades of fuel in your power sports type equipment small engines stuff like that because the ethanol in our 87 and 89 octane fuels breaks down rubber and that shit this is not a very old machine that shouldn't have uh, have broke down and torn like that, but it sure as heck did, and we're going to blame it on ethanol. I'm going to take these safety glasses, which are also mighty fine sunglasses, and get them off my head so I can see what I'm doing. Trying to get that linkage back. Most of these linkages you want to try and get back on before you mount the carburetor, or you're going to be taking the carburetor back off and trying it again. So around here is the socket. It looks like this. done this for I swear now you can see it's it's pretty tight we're gonna try and get this torques in there get that started and this one is a little bit loose so we don't want to try and torque it because we don't want to strip anything but it does allow us to run at this angle because you don't usually see, or I've never seen it, the Torx with the, the little ball end on it, like you can get in the Allens that kind of like that and allow you to rotate, say 20 or 30 degrees. But if you use one size too small, you can kind of run them finger tight-ish uh, for more of a remote. You know, I can't get my fingers in there to get these finger tight, but I can do it with this and then get that socket on there, which fits pretty dang snug around all the linkage and... Uh, it's kind of off center and it, I have trouble getting things, it won't start straight. You almost surely cross thread that bolt and we want to avoid that, so. Yeah. Let's 
see if we got enough hose. Yeah, we're good. That's not binding or pulling tight, so we can just reuse that like it is for now. Later, we may go to town and get some new hose for that, but it would be the right way to fix it. But for now, I want to make sure that this thing's going to start, and we will go from there. I'm probably not going to film starting it, because if I try and film it and it doesn't run good, I don't want my initial reaction to be caught on a camera. I should probably put that bracket back on. Uh, you know, we didn't pay super close attention to how this bracket goes back on, but we know that this piece is going to come out flat. So, and it's the mounting point, so we know if that's flat, then we are set there. So we do have other covers and stuff to put on, but we're going to go ahead and see if we can make this thing run as it is. So if it needs to come back off, we don't have to take the entirety of all the covers and everything back off. If it runs good, we'll just screw them back on and we'll be done for the time being. Okay, so it didn't start <clears throat> first try. Uh, we looked at it and... Still seemed like it just wasn't getting fuel correctly, so we decided to check the float height, which is, thank you for rubbing on the tripod cat, um, which is preset on these. Can you see the carburetor in the frame there, honey? Yeah. Uh, so if you watch this piece of white stuff here, as it goes down, it should be level just like it is. This should be where it shuts the fuel off. Well, guess what? There are the fuels on. There it's off. It shouldn't turn off until right there. So our float height, for whatever reason, is set incorrectly on a preset height float. So that's what we're going to be dealing with now. We are going to go grab some clamps here in just a second. And the cat's <laughs> going to sit on me. And we'll clamp that fuel line off and leave the carburetor mounted where it is and figure out what's going on with the float height from there. Okay, so what I did was I heated the little tab that controls the float height for its uh, operating height. And uh, we're going to try and sneak this back in, and it should be at a uh, better, uh -huh, better operating height. It won't take much, and uh, there's always the chance that I overdid it, because I'm... I'm good like that, but that feels about right. We're going to turn the fuel back on here. That's level and the fuel stopped. So theoretically, we have just fixed this. I'm going to shut the fuel off and uh, you can watch me put this bowl back on. These little clamps, by the way, I don't know how well you can see them. They're made by Lyle Tools. Uh, they work exceedingly expensive and I'll put a link up through my Amazon affiliate account at some point in time on this video uh, but these things are super handy I use them all the time and pretty much anything it's carbureted just uh, keeps your stuff cleaner keep your keep you from having to have fuel just everywhere Alright, we're going to take this off and uh, I'm going to try and start it again off camera so you can't hear me cussing and we'll go from there.
rewarding is that? You have a satisfying job, honey. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. All right. We're going to put these covers back on. As you can see, it runs now. It has plenty of fuel. Uh, how I, I did that, and you'll have to be careful, is you have to apply a little bit of heat. I actually used a, a map gas torch, which I use for everything, uh, to heat up a, a, a screwdriver. And when it was about the right temperature, I used it to apply heat to a localized position. Uh, it's kind of like three prongs, and then that piece of the float slide, or the piece of the needle slides in there, and to bend that one up and out a little bit, and that adjusted the float height. On the floats that aren't all plastic, there's a metal tab, and it's meant to be adjusted in that nature. This is the choke handle. It uh, is splined and clicks on when you have it in the right position. This thing has a uh, kill switch over there and another one if you're in an emergency you just jerk this out and it's got uh, a switch in there it's pretty simple switch right down in there and how that switch works is there's two metal contacts that are sprung to be touching and that grounds out your coil and kills it. Uh, this actually just interrupts that switch so this is an interrupter of sorts you yank it out the metal touches, voila, and it's a lot simpler than trying to reach over and grab that. So if we had any snow, 